Today what we're going to talk about is the infamous Montessori three-period lesson. Now I know this is something I've talked about before, we do have other videos on this, but today I'm going to show you how to do it and I'm also going to give you some tips to getting it right. So without further ado, let's get started and learn how to do a Montessori three-period lesson the right way. Neetha, today I'd like to teach you some new words. We're going to learn the names of some colors. Neetha, this is yellow. Can you say yellow? Yellow. Neetha, this is red. Can you say red? Red. Neetha, this is blue. Can you say blue? Blue. Neetha, can you show me blue? Neetha, can you show me red? Neetha, can you show me yellow? Neetha, can I ask you to give me yellow? Can I ask you to give me blue? Can I ask you to give me red? Neetha, could you tell me what this is? Red. Can you tell me what this is? Blue. Would you like to tell me what this is? Yellow. So today, Neetha, we have learned the names of three new colors. Let's see if you remember. Yellow, blue, red. On another day, I'll teach you some more. Let's put this material away. Here's a couple of things to take note of and be very aware, aware of when you are presenting a three-period lesson. Period one is done in isolation. That means only one item at a time. So I will not bring all the three colors and say this is blue, this is yellow. I only do one. So the child's focus is just on one thing. Mary, this is blue. Can you say blue? And then I will take it away. And I bring the next object. Okay, so always remember period one is done in isolation. Period two, we put everything together. Okay, so just going to start again. Mary, this is yellow. Can you say yellow? Mary, this is blue. Can you say blue? Mary, this is red. Can you say red? And then we come to period two. We put everything mixed up. Now the last thing I had said to Mary is red. That means red is most fresh in her mind. So when I begin period two, I must start with red. Basically, whatever is the last thing in the child's mind is what we start period two with. Mary, can you show me red? Mary, can you show me yellow? Mary, can you show me blue? I want to give maybe two or three directives. So. Um, you know, after show me, then I would go into maybe give me or point to or say it, just two or three things, whatever I wish, okay? Now, I can say anything after that. So, Mary, can you give me red? Mary, can you give me blue? And Mary, can you give me yellow? Now we come to period three. Period three, again, is done in isolation. That means only one object at a time. And I have to start with what is fresh in the child's mind, the last thing I mentioned, which is yellow. So I will bring just that. Mary, can you tell me what this is? I take it away. Mary, can you tell me what this is? Take it away. And Mary, can you tell me what this is? And finally, we end with a recap. Mary, today we've learned three colors. Can you tell me what they are? Blue, red, and yellow. That's your 3PL. Simple and as easy as that. Now that you know how to do it, you want to really understand what this is used for. Now, a lot of our presentations in the Montessori classroom are done in silence. If that's happening, how do we give children new vocabulary? How are they learning new words? How is their language expanding? 
That's why we use the three period lesson, so that we can extend children's vocabulary, add to it many, many new words. Now, here are some tips for getting it right. Tip number one, you've got to choose the right moment. You cannot just, you know, look at your lesson plan and say, well, you know what, it's on my schedule this week, so I'm going to do it right now, or just, you know, jump into whatever your child is doing and decide that you want to teach them new words. You've got to look for that right moment when the child is ready. Perhaps they've just finished working with this piece of material. Perhaps they're not really doing anything special. Perhaps they've shown you that they have an interest in a certain material. That's when you want to approach them humbly always and invite them, ask them, you know what, today I'd like to teach you some new words. Would you like to learn? And when they accept and they say, okay, that's when you go ahead and you do your three period lesson. Tip number two, you've got to make sure that a child has definitely worked with a piece of material. They have gotten comfortable with it and you know that they have somewhat mastered the concept. What do I mean by this? Let's say that I've taught, uh, presented to the child the pink tower. I'm not going to do the three period lesson exactly the next day. I'm going to wait till the child has worked with this material. I've seen that they can use it comfortably. I've seen that they can build the tower with ease and they show an understanding of the concept, which is size, big and small. They have understood which cubes go at the bottom, which ones must, must be built on top. When I can see that the child has grasped this concept, that's when I want to step in and offer them a lesson to learn some new words. And those words with the pink tower, just to give you an idea, would be to teach them big, medium, small, large, medium, small, or even just big and small. Tip number three, when we do a three period lesson, we are teaching children either two or three new words at a time. Never ever more than that. That's all we do. We pick two or three new words to teach them. Now, how do you know whether two or three? You look at your child and you gauge their level of ability. Do you think this child is a very fluent child? They pick up words easily. Then you can go straight away for three words. If you feel this child struggles a little bit, English is not their first language or the words you're teaching, that's not their first language, then you might want to just go with two words. If you're working with very young children, then definitely start with just two. If you're working with an older child, anywhere from three, three and a half upwards, then you're okay to go with three words. Tip number four, reinforce it. You cannot expect that if today I have taught my child three new colors, red, blue and yellow, and tomorrow I can go ahead and teach them three more new ones. This is where a lot of parents and teachers fail. We have to make sure that whatever words I've taught my child, they really do know it. So in casual situations, we try and, um, I don't want to use the word test, but we want to check up whether they've really uh, remembered those words. So maybe I have three crayons or we're sitting down doing a coloring activity and I'll just randomly say to my child, can you give me the red crayon? Can you show me the yellow one? Where is the blue one? We are in their bedroom and I say, hey, can you show me the blue t-shirt? Uh, can you point to something blue in this room? I just want to double check in a couple of different situations that my child really does remember these words. Now, of course, when we talk about something like colors, it sounds so easy, but tomorrow you might be teaching them the names of the planets. You might be teaching the, them Jupiter, Saturn and Uranus. Now that's hard. You teach it today, tomorrow it might be totally gone from the child's head. So what's the point of going on with new words? It's better we make sure that they've learned the first three words. They know it for sure, they can connect it to the object, and then I will go on with the next words. So please do remember, reinforce before you go on to teaching new ones. Tip number five, you can use the 3PL to teach just about any kind of vocabulary or language. 
it does not have to be. We, we introduce this when we are teaching sensorial and we relate it a lot to the sensorial ma uh, materials in that big and small, long and short, the names of the colors, rough and smooth. But we are not limited to that. We can just as well take this activity and use it. We use it a lot in culture. We teach them the names of animals. We teach them the names of fruit. In language, we use it to teach the letter sounds. In math, we use it to teach the names of the numbers. We teach them the decimal system through this. We teach them the names of 11 to 19 with this. So there, there is any possibility for using the three period lesson. Don't feel confined to just using it in a certain area and not somewhere else. Uh, you could even use it in practical life. If you're having a child who does not speak English as a first language, you can teach them simple words like jug and tongs. These are new words for many children. You can use a three period lesson to teach them. Now, tip number six. I would like to tell you is it's got to be very casual. It's not as formal as a presentation. It's more of us having a chit chat, a conversation with the child. So your body language should be relaxed and fun. We're just learning new words. So be easy about it. Don't be very firm and very rigid. Today I want to teach you some new words and this is what it's going to be. Make it very simple and easy for the child. Now a couple of things that I'd like you to keep in mind, mistakes do happen and then we get confused, you know, uh, the child is, you know, saying the wrong thing, what do I do, should I just stop, should I keep giving them clues, what, where do I go from here? It's fine for a child to make a mistake. Again, the example I'm using is a simple one, but mistakes do happen when we're learning more complex words. Now, let, now let's say in period one, you wouldn't really have a mistake because it's very clear cut. This is, can you repeat it? So there's no real mistake there. But sometimes when we come to period two and I ask the child, can you show me blue? And they point to the wrong color. Now I can just try again. It could be maybe they misheard me. Maybe they were just not focused at that moment. So I'll try again. Okay, can you show me red? Can you show me yellow? Can you show me blue and see what happens? Now if I keep trying and I see that the child keeps making the same mistake, here's what I can do. I can, for one, as an adult, I should gauge, is my child making this mistake because they are just not focused and not interested? In that case, I would abandon the activity right there and I would say, you know what, how about we do this on another day? Let's do something else right now. Maybe I can show you something else. Because to push forward with it would be a waste of both our times. So it's better we let it go and we can come back to it on another day when the child is more present and more focused. On the other hand, if my child makes a mistake because they really are confused, one idea is to go back a step. So I will collect my tablets and I will decide, let me eliminate one. Maybe three is too much for him or her today. So I'm going to remove one and just focus on these two colors. And I will restart my 3PL again. This is blue, this is red and go on. Okay, so you can go a step back. You can do that at period two. Even if you get to period three and you're asking the child, what is this? And they make a mistake. And again, it's because they're really confused. Then all you have to do is go back one step, okay, into show me, see if the mistake is still happening. If it is, then you can restart and just do two items, two, two different objects or materials. I had a really good question about what happens when the child is kind of purposely saying the wrong thing, pointing out the wrong item. They do know it and you know they know it, but they are purposely making a mistake just to kind of tease you, play with you, test you. I don't know, you know, what, what it might be. And if that happens, remember again, I said, this is a casual interaction. Play back with them and say, oh, did you forget? Oh, I thought you knew this. I really thought you learned these colors. I didn't know that you didn't know the colors. And when you tease them back, then they kind of, you know, want to defend themselves and say, but I do know it. 
I am aware and then they will do the right thing you know um, just twist it a little and play a little you know maybe you can show me how about you give me a 3PL uh, and teach me the words you know turn it back on them to see if they really know the words everything should feel very natural and very comfortable while you're doing it I hope I have made it easy for you to uh, carry out a three period lesson with your children at school or even at home this is so helpful it's such a helpful tool try it out and let me know in the comments below how it's worked out for you if you faced any struggles with the three period lesson I'd love to know just leave a comment below and I can come back and answer your question and help you out so try it out and let me know I can't wait to hear you know we have so many more videos make sure you're subscribed to our channel make sure you hit that bell so you don't miss a single video and until we meet again have a beautiful day